Zach, congratulations. I think the Eagles game is kicking off now, so uh, can you describe your emotions about that's still your football team, but obviously you don't hope their baseball team does well tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll be tuning in as soon as I get off the, the podium here to see, what, see what's going on. Um, yeah, that's still my team, but, um, you know, we're here to take care of business. Um, so, yeah. Over here on the right. Um, Zach, just like for, was it Gibbsboro was the town you grew up in? or okay. Yeah, uh, Somerdale is where I, I was born, grew up. Uh, we moved to Gibbsboro when I was 11, so 6th, 7th grade, something like that. Yeah. But I claim Somerdale. What uh, what will the emotions be beyond starting, you know, obviously, game one of, of the LCS, considering that it is basically your hometown? Yeah, um, I think it's, uh, it's interesting for sure um, to, you know, start game one of the NLCS at a, the field the stadium you grew up coming to as a kid um you know coming to see teams play um but I mean it, it this is about the NLCS really is what it's where my emotions are um still gonna go through my routine um I'm playing for free here with all the t all the tickets uh compared to anywhere else but uh yeah I uh yeah, it's this is about the NLCS. Um, you know, the external factors. Uh, I'm gonna block, you know, block them out as best I can. How many people are you expecting? A lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Uh, uh, I'm sure there's people that have tickets that, um, you know, I'm I'm not even responsible for. Um, but I got a big side of the family on my mom's side, so you know, it comes to the territory, I guess. Jake on the left. When you say block out the external factors, what is that? actually mean does that mean turning off your phone does that mean not pretending like pretending you're in a place that you're not from what does it mean actually to block those out yeah i think um i will say everyone's been um pretty solid for the most part and not necessarily asking me to you know do things and see them and, and whatnot um but for me it's it's more so um you know i'm here to we're here to handle business um so it's not a vacation it's not a time to come home and, and see everyone um you know, until obviously my job's done, you know, Monday night, then, you know, be able to let down a little bit and see some family. But, um, you know, even last night and today, just I was at the hotel um, kind of doing my thing, really. So, yeah, it's just, um, you know, treating it like a business trip. Steve. Uh, Zach, just your your thoughts, uh, the confidence you guys have right now, and, and, and feels like you guys are on quite a roll right now and, and everyone's really buying in. Yeah, um, you know, I've kind of said this numerous times in the last couple of weeks is that, um, you know, I think a lot, of, a lot of people counted us out, um, you know, even from the start of the season. But, you know, 26 guys in that clubhouse or, you know, how many ever guys put on a uniform this year and helped us get to where we're at? I don't think are surprised. Um, I think we all expect to kind of be in this position, expect to succeed. Um, and, you know, we're just glad we're doing it at the right time, really. Um, you know, we, we played a good opponent, um, you know, in the Dodgers, and we played, we're going to play another really good opponent in the Phillies. So, yeah, we're, we're playing with some confidence right now for sure. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I don't think anyone's necessarily surprised in that clubhouse that we're here. Chris. Hey, Zach. Even after some of your, your best starts, you find ways to kind of nitpick and find areas to improve. So kind of going into this LCS, what are the expectations of yourself? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm. St <laughs> I was still throwing. I still throw a bullpen the other day. I think it was like 37 pitches. Um, you know, I'm. St I'm trying to get better every every day that I touch the baseball. Um, you only get so many throws when you're out there. So you know, for me, I don't think it's. Yeah, you have to kind of balance the you know fatigue and and the long season and, and workload and stuff like that. But you know, for me, I'm still trying to be you know better than I was the last time out there, especially now. Um, on this stage and at this point of the season really so yeah for me i mean you know my as cliche as it is and i say it after every start is like i just try to give us a chance to win um trying to do too much i think is you know where you can get into trouble so we had a good offense we had a good bullpen um so my job is just to throw up as many zeros really as possible and give us a chance to win jesse Zach, you and you and Zach Wheeler had uh, very similar seasons statistically, both excellent seasons. Just how do you view this matchup uh, against him in Game One? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, Zach's is is one of the best in the league, best in one of the best in the National League. So it'll be fun. Um, you know, I, I admire what he does. I think he goes about um, you know attacking hitters um, in an awesome way. I think his stuff is really good. Um, 
I remember when I hit as a as a pitcher, he was probably the toughest at bat that I had, I had faced. Um, but yeah, he's he's got great stuff. Um, that's a good team over there. It's a good lineup, good bullpen. I think we we match up, um, you know, for the most part, pretty pretty close to identical. Um, so it'll be a fun series. Uh, back left. Hey Zach, uh, what uh, specifically about this Phillies lineup um, makes them so good? Yeah, I mean, I think um, you know the first thing that's, that jumps off the page is that they got you know everybody in the lineup can can leave the ballpark. Uh, that's for sure. Um, they have the speed dynamic and you know Trey and, and Stott, um, Rojas, and even Marsh. Um, those guys can run a little bit. They're an experienced lineup. Um, they take their walks, and you know I, I think they have they have a lot of things going for them for sure. Um, it's it's not one dimensional by any means, and I think that you know poses a, a challenge for um, any pitcher. Down here on the right. Zach, you've been around this kind of ball club for a minute now, but what's it like to finally see them get to this point and, and see this team grow up with all these young guys? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, this you know, getting the moments like this is uh, is why you suit up, um, you know, and this is where you you envision yourself, you know, starting in February when spring training starts. Um, so it's it's been awesome, honestly. Um, We've been through some ups and downs for sure over the last five years. Um, you know, the guys have been here for for a while. So, yeah, it's it's just been kind of gratifying to to see it turn around um, kind of as fast as it did after 21 and, and 22 was was a little bit of a struggle there in the beginning. So, yeah, just to kind of, you know, get out of the dark times, I think um, it's been awesome to be a part of. Bob. Zach, having been here before, when you guys piped in that fake crowd noise the other day for your workouts, do you think it will help, or it was almost comical that it wasn't coming close to the crowd noise you expect the next two nights? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, the the crowd noise at Chase was a little more treble than than bass, um, so it was a little more on the annoying side, which I think honestly was, um, you know, might have might have been beneficial. I think you know just to kind of simulate outfielders you know being able to communicate and things like that just you know something super loud um i haven't been to an environment here like with the phillies i've been to an eagles game when they played dallas and that gets pretty loud too um so i imagine it's, it's very similar um but yeah I, I think um you know I, I think we tried to do the best we could to prepare for it um but like i said i mean i had echoed this after um, I don't know when it was when we were talking, and I was like, if you're scared, stay home. Um, so worrying about the crowd noise, worrying about all that stuff, it's like you just have to go about your process, go about you know what you do well, um, execute the fundamentals, and, and you'll be fine. Uh, Jesse on the right. Just going back to you being the local guy, I mean, was, this, was it your childhood dream to pitch for the Phillies in a situation like this? And if not, is this at least the second best thing? Uh, I dreamed of pitching for the Cardinals. Uh, I was a Cardinals fan, so um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just I wasn't a Phillies fan as a kid growing up. McGuire was my guy, um, but I think yeah, the, the the kid in me was you know I wanted to pitch for the Cardinals in the playoffs, but at the same time like I wanted to pitch for anybody in the playoffs um, and be on that stage. So, but yeah, I, it was of course. Michael, stand it up on the left. Hey, Zach, I was just wanted to, have you had any friends or family uh, attend or go to the postseason games last year or this year and kind of say to you, hey, it would be great for you to pitch in this atmosphere or just kind of give you a heads up about uh, just how great it would be to pitch here? Um, yeah. I, did you read the article where my mom said that? <laughs> it was funny. That's like verbatim what she said. Uh, my mom, I had got my mom some tickets. Um, for the World Series last year, her boss wanted to go, and uh, as stipulation to get the tickets, she got to go. Um, and she just the energy here, um, she said, was unmatched. And that's exactly what you said. It was like you know, one day I hope you get to you know be in an environment like this, um, you know, pitching in the playoffs and just the energy. Um, so yeah, it's it, honestly it's it's kind of wild the fact that you know here we are a year later and it's in the same spot where she you know had kind of mentioned the, the environment the energy um so i'm excited jp zach i respect that you're honoring a, a tar heel with your with your shirt today and one of the all-time greats and i know a favorite athlete of yours what have you learned about 
the big moment by studying Michael Jordan's career and, and drawing inspiration from him? Yeah, um, uh, it's it's funny you say that because um, Casey and I were just talking about um, we couldn't remember which documentary, but um, talking about when they they drew up the play for Michael to take the shot in in the national championship as a freshman. Um, they knew he'd be open, and I forget who was talking about if it was Dean Smith or Roy Williams, whoever, and. They said you could just see the look on his face in, in the huddle. It was like he was prepared for it um, and that he, he wasn't scared to take the shot. So uh, for me, I think it comes down to preparation. Um, I was thankful enough to kind of to, to get to pick Clayton Kershaw's brain a little bit this past series and just kind of asked him, you know, I'm infatuated with how guys have done it for so long. Um, and I mean, I think that the key with him is preparation. Um, you prepare for four out of the five days. So that way the fifth day your talent takes over and everything, you know, your your mind isn't wandering. So um, I think that seems to be the, the, the common theme with a lot of the greats um, in any field, really. We'll finish up with Jack on the right. Uh, just back to the noise real quick. I was just curious, on the with the pitch comm, like, was there any impacts as far as being able to hear that um, back and forth, for example, in L.A. when it was at its loudest? Yeah, um, I, I didn't have it turned up all the way in L.A. I'm still... Um, just I, I, I just feel like if it's on the max volume, I feel like everyone can hear it. So I'd rather just not have that. Um, but I, I did have it pretty close to the top, um, and it was it was getting tough to hear. I think um, if I maxed it out, it might have been fine. Um, and I know that Pitchcom was coming up with kind of something that had like a little tube that kind of got closer to your ear. So I don't know if we have those this series. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it's going to be loud here for sure, and I imagine it's going to be on my pitch column be on max volume from pitch one. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's, uh, for the most part, I'm calling the pitches anyway, so I kind of know. Um, so we'll see what happens. Have you just um, been, as the years gone by, you know, using the, this pitch column, like, what's your comfort level with it overall? Do you really like it? Is it a good innovation for you? Yeah, I think, I think it's awesome, really, um, especially with, with the clock. Um, I think, you know, without the clock, it was kind of, you know, whatever, finger signs are the same, you know, it's the same thing. But with the clock and, you know, being able to call your own pitches, um, you know, for me, just kind of hit it right on the on the keypad, I think is, is huge. And I think, um, you know, it seems, seems different, but, um, you know, I'm kind of glad we have it.